Lion and its rags to riches story is one of the most well-known locomotives in British preservation. But there are major doubts as to the actual identity of the locomotive now known as Lion. The original Lion was ordered on the 2nd of October 1837 by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway from Todd Kitson and Laird of Leeds at a cost of £1,100. Boiler pressure was to be 50 psi and cylinders were to measure 11 by 20 inches. The locomotive as delivered looked very, very different from that which we see today. Going by Edward Woods, the chief engineer of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway's boiler specification. The boiler was 7 feet 6 inches in length and of the long plate variety. There were two steam domes and two cased safety valves. Wheels were very likely 4 feet 6 inches in diameter, in common with other examples of the large Samson class of locomotive to which Lion belongs. Lion and Tiger and other locomotives of this batch were also fitted with the patented radial valve gear of John Melling, the locomotive superintendent of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, as well as some of his other patent improvements, including a water tank beneath the firebox, which acted as a preheater for the boiler feed water. At the end of 1839, John Melling was given three months' notice to quit, and in 1840, John Durance took charge of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway's locomotives and its workshops. He set out to standardise the locomotive fleet, and he would do so by providing a standard set of boilers, cylinders and valve gear. Any locomotive which could not be so converted, and there was quite a lot of them, were to be scrapped. Lion and its sister Tiger, then only two years old but fitted with the various patent innovations of John Melling, were amongst those to be quote-unquote rebuilt to conform with the new standard. In the words of Edward Woods, this work would involve the replacement of the cylinders, the valve chests, the valves themselves, the valve gear and modification of the inside frames. The new valve gear was that of the gab type, with opposed gabs invented by William Barber Boudicombe at the Edgehill workshops of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway in 1840. The valves would be of the long travel type, with lap and lead to improve steam and therefore fuel efficiency. Edward Woods states that these rebuilt engines were essentially a stopgap until more of John Durance's standard bird-class locomotives came into service, and I quote, they were such of the old engines as have had all their parts renewed, with the exception, perhaps, of the boiler, firebox and framing. The word perhaps in this sentence can be made to do a lot of heavy lifting. It could mean that Lion and Tiger and the other rebuilds were completely renewed, leaving little of the original locomotive other than name and number. But it could also mean that not all locomotives which were rebuilt were completely renewed. Given that Lion and Tiger's boilers were just over two years old in 1841, it would be unusual to have them replaced. Likewise, it would be unusual to replace them with what were essentially new locomotives. That said, however, we know Mastodon, purchased at the same time as Lion, was quote-unquote rebuilt at a cost of £889, 12 shillings and 10 pence, suggesting that this rebuild was in fact building a new locomotive, which cost over £200 more than one of the new bird-class engines. Lion and Tiger emerged from this rebuilding process in April and May 1841. The new standard boilers were specified to be 9 feet in length, although some bird-class locomotives are recorded with boilers 8 feet 6 inches long. Interestingly, Lion's present boiler barrel is also 8 feet 6 inches long. It's 8 feet 8.5 inches between the tube plates, and it is 3 feet 9 inches in outside diameter. So it fits known dimensions for boilers made by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway in the 1840s. 
It is, however, considerably longer and of a larger diameter than the boiler supplied in 1838. The probability is, therefore, that Lyme was completely rebuilt in 1841, and that the present boiler preserves the original key dimensions. Although, of course, the 1841 boiler would have lacked the very high-crowned firebox of the preserved locomotive. It would have been similar to that fitted to the bird-class locomotive being built at the time, with a steam dome over the firebox and two cased safety valves on the boiler barrel. Boiler pressure in 1841 was specified to be 80 psi, but Lion's current boiler is running at 50 psi. Driving wheels were standardised at 5 feet diameter for both passenger and goods locomotives, and cylinders too were standardised at 13 by 20 inches for goods engines and 12 by 18 inches for passenger engines. Unusually, however, Lion and Tiger did not receive new 13 by 20 inches cylinders, but in fact 12 by 18 inch cylinders, as common for a passenger engine effectively making Lion and Tiger mixed traffic locomotives rather than pure goods engines. The cylinders, however, present us with problems. Lion, as preserved, has cylinders measuring 14 by 18 inches, so two inches larger than those specified by Woods and Durance, or, as stated in Parliamentary Returns by John Durant in 1844 or 1846, they are also clearly not those of 1841 rebored to a larger diameter. The piston itself, the piston rod, valve gear and are all of a piece. They all date from the 1840s and all carry stamps in the same font made with the same tool. They belong together as a matched set, as does the crank axle and the trailing axle and their wheels. The leading axle and wheels, however, are a later replacement. The leading wheels are cast iron, made by Rothwell and Company of Bolton, and have 16 spokes to a different pattern to those of the crank axle and trailing axles. The crank axle wheels and trailing axle wheels have 18 spokes and are forged in other words, they are fire welded together, so a completely different type of construction. We know that the leading wheels were in situ by the 1850s, as when Lion's leading wheels were retired in the late 1980s, the removed tyre was stamped with crew, suggesting that the new tyre had been rolled and fitted at the crew works of the London and North Western Railway. At some point in its history, Lion has either broken or had its crank axle replaced, however, as the outside horn guides for the crank axle are of a different pattern to those of the leading and trailing wheels and actually differ from each other on the left and right hand side of the locomotive. We know that in May 1859, the London and North Western Railway sold what was then ballast engine number 14 to the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board. This is attested to both in the LNWR minutes and the Harbour Board minutes. However, when Ernest Ahrens was doing his research in 1924, he made some curious omissions. He states that Lion alone was purchased by the Docks and Harbour Board to work the pump in Prince's Graving Dock. Yet, the Harbour Board Minute referred to the purchase of not one locomotive in, in May 1859, but three. Three complete locomotives and tenders, one from the LNWR and two from the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. The Board Minutes also note that these locomotives had been purchased after a request by the dock engineer for more motive power. Furthermore, the Prince's Graving Dock facility didn't come into use until the end of January 1875, which leaves quite a hole in Aaron's theory. Aaron's argument goes something like this. Lion was purchased in 1859, and an old locomotive was found working a pump in 1923, 
uh, go, it's the same locomotive. It's easy to discount the two others bought in 1859 as they were two two twos, but there are other candidates. Returning to the Haberboard Minutes, we see in October 1858 that two locomotives and tenders were purchased to work the docks in Birkenhead from Messrs Thompson and Cole of Bolton for £500 each. The Minutes sadly do not give any specifics about these two locomotives, but advertisements placed by Thompson and Cole for the right date show that they had two 042 Stevenson type locomotives for sale with 50 psi boilers, 14 by 18 inch cylinders and 5 feet wheels for approximately the same price as paid for them by the harbour board. In other words, these two locomotives were identical to the preserved Lion. Furthermore, there is absolutely no evidence in the extensive and detailed archive of the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board to suggest whether it was ballast engine number 14, alias Lion, either of the two Thompson and Cole locomotives, or any other second-hand relic which was put to work in the pump house for the Prince's Graving Dock. The paper trail simply ends with their purchase, Lion simply falls out of history at this point, and as a historian, this, this is a problem. When Lion was first rediscovered in 1919, it was thought to be an LNWR locomotive from the 1840s. Interest was next shown in Lion, or at least the locomotive in the pump house, in 1923, when again the venerable machine was thought, because of the valve gear and the outside sandwich frame, to be from the 1840s, but this time from the Manchester and Birmingham Railway, either their number 12 or 13, both of which were sold to the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board in 1874, a date which usefully corresponds with the opening of Prince's Graving Dock facility in January 1875. A member of the Harbour Board staff, however, who was in their 80s, and who could have potentially remembered the arrival of the locomotive and the installation of a venerable locomotive in the Prince's Dock pump house, said that the locomotive had once been called Lion and that it had come from the London and North Western. Aaron's research in 1924, which is when Lion was first positively identified as Lion, showed that Lion had indeed been sold to the Harbour Board. So, game, set and match? Well, not quite. The old employee may have remembered the arrival of Lion in 1859, but could also equally have misremembered or misidentified which locomotive it was which went into the pump house at the end of 1874. They could, like Aaron's, have assumed locomotive found in pump house was the same old locomotive they remembered arriving. Furthermore, the bottom end of Lion is, well, it's pretty much entirely 1840s. The valve gear is of a type invented in 1840, and if the locomotive had been built or rebuilt after 1846, Stevenson Link Motion would surely have been used instead. But the big problem is the cylinders. They're 1840s with 1840 cylinders worked by 1840s valve gear. Yet we know categorically Lion had, in the 1840s, cylinders measuring 12 by 18 inches, not 14 by 18. If Lion had been re-cylinders, say, in the 1850s, then the pistons would be of a later type. It would have also necessitated some major surgery to install new cylinders, and there's no real evidence of a major rework of the locomotive. Furthermore, given that Lion was pretty much obsolete, by the end of the 1840s. It's unlikely any major work was warranted on it, and if the cylinders were indeed changed, it's also likely that the valve gear would have been updated at the same time. So either John Durance made a mistake on his parliamentary returns, which is unlikely, 
that there was a hitherto unknown and equally unlikely third rebuild. Or, going by the cylinder sizes, Lion is not Lion. The present boiler as preserved on Lion is clearly a later replacement. We know that the Mersey Dock and Harbour Board had a boiler made for a locomotive with 14-inch cylinders in 1865, but no locomotive is specified as being its recipient. This 1865 boiler had 98 tubes, 8 feet 7 inches long and 2 inches outside diameter, which matches the boiler carried in preservation by Lion to this day. The plate sizes and the fact that they have been flanged by pressing suggest a later 19th century date, so too that the rivets of the boiler are machine rather than hand closed. It is however possible that the two salter type safety valves have been reused from an earlier boiler. We also know from oral testimony that the boiler had one or both tube plates renewed about 1900, and furthermore that the boiler was second hand at that time, coming from locomotive number 149, a number which is still carried on a brass plate on the back of the firebox. Stamps on the firebox wrapper indicate that the present boiler was repaired and tested to 70 PSI on the 20th of June 1902. The replacement or extensive repair of a boiler made in 1865 in 1902 would fit the expected lifespan of a wrought iron boiler, so it all neatly fit together. If the boiler were in fact second hand in 1902, it would also explain why it doesn't properly fit with less than optimal clearances. The left hand leading wheel rubs against the smoke box and to allow the wheel to rotate alongside the left hand boiler feed pipe, a suitable dent has had to be made in the feed pipe. But none of this would be a problem for a locomotive then being used as a stationary pump given that the leading wheels didn't need to rotate. But it still leaves the problem that Lion, when discovered in 1923 and later restored at Crewe, had no nameplate, no builder's plate, it had no identity. It wasn't until 1924 that the locomotive was positively identified as Lion, Furthermore, Irons, who identified the locomotive as Lion, made the erroneous statement that Lion had been purchased to work a pump, which we know it was not. He also ignores the other locomotives purchased by the Harbour Board, although whether this is malicious or a lack of time to carry out further research is not clear, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt, although the story he gives us is very simplistic. We do know that Lion was purchased in May 1859 with a tender as a working locomotive. It wasn't purchased to work a pump, and we know that the pump house it was found in didn't come into operation until 1875. Furthermore, there is no evidence other than one piece of oral history as to whether it was Lion which was used to pump the Prince's graving dock or another locomotive. Whilst it is possible that in 1841 Lion was rebuilt so that nothing remained of the original 1838 locomotive, the problem still exists with the cylinder dimensions. Their 1840 cylinders and the pistons valves, valve gear, they all belong together. So this suggests to me that Lion is not Lion but instead that the locomotive currently known as Lion is perhaps one of the two locomotives purchased in October 1858 from Thompson and Cole of Bolton, both of which certainly match the known dimensions of Lion in preservation. It may, of course, be any other Stevenson-type 042 locomotive from the 1840s.
I'd love to think that Lion really is Lion that we see today in Liverpool Museum. But there are many holes in the story, and the locomotive itself tells its own story. What we're looking at is essentially an 1840s machine, built sometime between 1840 and about 1846, that's been fitted with a much later boiler. Whether Lion is actually Lion is still open to debate. And I'm not convinced the evidence tells us either way that the locomotive on display is Lion or any other contender. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please leave a comment below and let's get this conversation started. Please also like, share and subscribe and click the notification bell. I'd also like to thank my supporters on Patreon and Ko-fi for helping to make this video possible. And I look forward to seeing you all next time on Rail Story.